Devil Hunter slash Deadeye versus Gunslinger. Which one's better? Who should play what? What's the difference? And all those sorts of things are going to be discussed in the following video. Hello, my name is Wilkie, and thank you for joining me into a quick Lost Ark video. We're going to dive down deep into both of those classes. And obvious aside, the visual differences, we're going to talk about the skills, stats, engravings, and a few perks that each of that class has. The stat differences between Gunslingers and Dead Eyes are fairly simple, but they are definitely worth mentioning. So we're looking at the specialty stat, which is the class defining stat for every other class as well. For Dead Eyes, we have crit damage increase on firing pistols, in this case 107%, increases damage of all shotgun skills by 35%, and increases armor penetration and ignore resistance when firing the carbine, that is the sniper rifle, also by 35%. Now, if we take a look at the Gunslinger, this one's a little bit different in the fact that shotguns and sniper or carbine stats are switched. As you can see, the crit damage is the same, 107%, but shotguns now have the armor penetration perk and the carbine now has a flat damage increase. So just simply looking at specialty, you can already tell that Devil Hunter has a priority or a bit more focus on the shotgun, whereas the Gunslinger can definitely take more advantage of the carbine slash sniper rifle. But going over the skills that are the same, all of the pistol skills, the three shotguns, and the three sniper abilities are the same on both of those classes. Albeit the Gunslinger model might have slightly different animations, the effects are going to be the same. These are level 0 abilities without any tripods. Going over the skills that are different for Devil Hunter, we have three pistol skills, two shotguns, and two sniper abilities that are different. So, execution being a dash with a kick, quick shot, mostly used for PvP, and cruel chaser. Omen of the Apocalypse, shotgun ruler, followed by triple explosion, and finally aim and shoot. So for Gunslinger it's also three pistol, two shotgun and two different sniper abilities. For pistol we have Trial Lunge which acts as a long range mobility and hard stagger tool, very frequently used in PvP. Clear with the right tripod can also be used as a mobility tool and Flurry Bullets which is sort of like a movement and also kind of damaging ability. Shotgun we have Deadly Number and Dead Zone which do look somewhat similar to Devil Hunter, but are definitely different. Then we have Zero Ray and Eight Strike on the Sniper. So looking at the engravings of Devil Hunter, the first one we have is called Enhanced Weapon, and that simply adds a crit buff whenever you swap weapons, as you can see here, Enhanced Weapon. This one increases my crit rate at 30% because I have it level 3. As you can see here, right now we have a flat 30% crit rate. Once that buff runs out, it's gone. This one refreshes every time you switch the weapon, so hopefully we'll get that version on the NA and DU servers as well. This is very easy to keep up, essentially it's a permanent crit rate that you have buffed whenever you just swap the weapons. For the second engraving, it gets a little bit trickier. This one's called Handgunner, and as you may have guessed, this one locks away both shotgun and sniper rifle. In return, the engraving pops your pistol damage up by 60%, your awakening damage by 30%, and your impairment, that's called depletion damage here, is going to be improved by 40%. This is in order to somewhat keep this engraving competitive. It's still very commonly received that the regular shotgun, sniper, pistol, devil hunter will definitely still deal more damage than the handgunner version, but post buff, this is the buff version that you can see here on the screen, it's definitely now also viable to be used. And it definitely is an easier playstyle, so if you do like Devil Hunter as a whole, but you don't like the weapon switching aspect, this is a build that you could potentially go for. So as far as engravings go, we also have a buff engraving that is called Peacekeeper or Peacemaker. The difference here is that there's three different buffs that we cycle through. Pistol, Garands, is 16% attack speed. Swapping to shotguns, we now get 25% crit rate. And swapping to the sniper rifle, we get a damage increase by 10%. Should the enemy be below 50% health, 
we get another 30% damage increase at level 4. The other engraving sort of functions similar to hand counter, with the difference being that we now only use the shotgun and we still get to use sniper and pistol. So we don't only are locked into pistol, but we still get to use the sniper. In return, we get a 35% crit rate at level 3. At level 1, it's still a 20% crit rate. So you can choose between using all three weapons, or if you prefer a more laid back and long range style with pistol and sniper only, you can also opt in for that. As far as awakenings go, Devil Hunter has, like any other class, two awakenings. The first one is the clay bombing, which I also frequently call the donut. The reason I call this thing a donut is actually that the hurt box, as you can see here, we only did a very small amount of damage to the scarecrow. So the actual impactful damage is in that big explosion radius around us. So you can see here the damage is dealt in this, which is why I also very often kind of complain about this awakening in PvP, because you do have to position yourself correctly. It deals higher damage on the other one, but in return it's a bit more annoying to use. The other one is a bursting flare, which essentially is, uh, I think they're called it railgun or coil rifle, which fires three blasts in a very straight line. The range is actually fairly huge. Like you can still see that even if we don't see the enemy on the screen, we still hit it. Incredibly good, incredibly useful, but damage is lower. For Gunstinger's Awakenings, we have Predatory Gaze, which is a very high powered bullet with a fairly okayish range, but a little bit of a slower activation range. Incredibly powerful, but only the main target. If you land this in the right time in PvP, you can sort of one-shot people. This can crit up to 100k. Like I said, drawback gets a bit slower, and the AoE is fairly small. Bombard, while dealing lower damage, has an incredibly large AoE. As you can see here, the explosion is huge. We're going to be hitting that if we're going to shoot at this gear crow here. Boom, you can see that we can hit those. So the radius of this is fairly big. Albeit the damage is a bit lower, it's faster in execution and incredibly useful. Even if we just yeet it out in PvP like this, boom, it's incredibly useful. If we were to compare playstyles, a lot of people would straight up say Gunstinger is better than Deadeye. I would not necessarily disagree, but I think it's more precise to say that Devil Hunter slash Deadeye is much more difficult to play optimally or to whinge out the highest DPS out of the class, and that's for two reasons. First of all, Devil Hunters do rely on back attacks. For those of you who are new to the game, back attacks come with a 5% damage increase and a 10% crit chance. So this is really important because the added crit chance really helps Devil Hunters to shine as well as the damage increase. Secondly, shotguns come with a modifier or a point blank modifier, which doubles the damage of shotgun abilities used if you are very close to the target. And that also includes auto attacks. So as you can see here, my hits are around seven, almost 800 damage here. Take us up closer and all of a sudden my damage is almost 1,600. So double damage for shotguns used point blank, except for Last Supper, but all the other three abilities, which are also our main damage dealing abilities, do actually deal double the damage when used at point blank range. So ideally you are behind the boss and very close to the boss as well, which isn't ideal considering Devil Hunter is a very squishy class and especially later bosses are very frantically moving and scoring back attacks is not always possible. Hand Gunner is a little bit less on the back attack side. You still want to score it, but it's not nearly as difficult, especially since you lose the dependency on being at point blank range. So that's why Hand Gunner is considered to be the easier version but it also holds, in theory, less DPS. So if we're taking a look at the Gunslinger PvE playstyle, there's, well, the two drawbacks that we mentioned don't really apply to Gunslingers. There's two reasons for that. First of all, she doesn't have any of that double damage modifier. So as you can see here, I have two Scarecrows here. My damage in point blank deals around 100 per the fast hits. Or if we're just going to use this, you can see that the damage numbers are the same on both of those targets. The second thing is a little bit more hidden, and that lies in the tripods that Gunslinger can select. Shotgun Barrage, Deadly Number, and Dead Zone have a tripod that is called the Last Barrier. This removes the back attack modifier. In return, it grants you damage and crit chance. So it kind of removes the back attack modifier, but also gives you the stats. In return for that, you sacrifice one of your tripods. So, what this means Neither does Gunslinger have to be at the back of the enemy, so you can attack from any angle. You can also attack from any range. You don't have to be close to the boss as long as you're within the range and you can see that the shotgun range is actually not that small. So you can just put this out at a fairly long distance and you're still able to deal full damage. So that definitely makes this a lot easier. Also, if you take a look at the other engraving, I currently have the Peacemaker on. 
If we're taking a look at hunting time, the sniper rifle can be used from a very far distance without actually being in the vicinity of the boss. So this makes Gunslinger just way easier to use effectively, as opposed to Devil Hunter who really has to be close and at the back of the enemy if you want to play optimally. This is why very often why most people would say that Gunslinger is better. Like I said initially, I don't necessarily think she's better, she's just definitely way easier and way more consistent to use, making it more ideal for a broader mass of people to play. So as far as PvP goes, most people would also agree, and I also do agree on this, that Gunslinger is in fact better than Devil Hunter. Nonetheless, Devil Hunter is a very capable PvP class, and it does actually have one significant advantage over Gunslinger, and that is the super armor or the tier 2 super armor on execution that lets the Devil Hunters be much more challenging in order to face melees and also be a bit more of a threat in terms of close quarters combat. As far as the Gunslinger goes, she has even more mobility than the already very mobile Devil Hunter. Also, the Awakenings are way easier and much better to use alongside a better sniper game. So ideally, Gunslinger is really better, but both classes are very potent, so you should pick whichever one you like the best. So, after all that's being said, you may ask a question, Well, Wilkie, I only see you play Devil Hunter. Why are you not playing Gunslinger? The answer is very simple. I suck at it. I really do. I tried PvPing on Gunslinger for around 100 games when it launched, but I just, for whatever reason, I can't rewire my brain to play Gunslinger efficiently. I always go back to Devil Hunter playstyle, so for me it's just really... This is something that I started with, this is something that I love playing, and I do enjoy it so much that I'm just sticking with it. Outside of that being said, both classes are very potent, especially in PvP, but also in PvE. If in capable hands, both are extremely dangerous and useful for the parties alike. So pick whichever you like best and you find more attractive in terms of looks, playstyle, whatever it is that floats your boat. Just select whichever one you want. Outside of this, I do hope that this sort of, you know, kind of cleared up a few misconceptions and kind of like the idea of they are similar, but they are actually also different. So this hopefully nails that here. Outside of this, I also stream every now and then, so if you want to see me live on Twitch, feel free to check out my channel in the description below. And like I said again, I do hope this was helpful, and I'll see you next time.